To continue our story, the faces of those returning to the Cladnir mansion in the capital, having faced the winter wind, were marked with deep despondency. It had been a long war, the main hero of the victory was no doubt the Cladnir, however, the king wasn't pleased with it, so he devised this marriage. During the dinner at the Cladnir mansion, the Margrave was furious as he slammed the dining table because the reward they got from their unwavering loyalty to the kingdom was a foolish princess. Eric was silent the whole time. In his thought, their family can't refuse the king's command. The wedding was already inevitable even if the marriage was unwanted. As the young lord of Cladnir, he must do his duty. What about the engagement with the Crispin family? Eric's cousin Emmerich began to speak. Of course it has been nullified. That crazy tyrant acted so recklessly, the Margrave replied and took a sip of the strong liquor. The Margravine of Cladnir had been silently listening to all this, while pouring liquor for her husband. Ten days later, the palace maids visited the Cladnir mansion under the pretext of inspecting the princess's future chambers. How can it be that the princess will use a bedroom by herself, and the bathroom is far too distant from here? As the maids picked at every little detail, the Margravine's lips twitched with irritation. Still, she maintained her composure and replied as softly as she could. As you can see, there is a connecting passage between their rooms, so there is no need for them to share a single chamber. Despite her efforts, the maids remained obstinate. Your ladyship, the princess is in poor health. She will often need assistance during the night, the other maid said. Then we can arrange for an attendant to be stationed, the Margravine replied. My goodness, an attendant? Are you suggesting that the princess's safety be entrusted to a servant in the dead of night? The two maids still remained obstinate. The Margravine could no longer hide her displeasure, to think that her son, someone she had always been proud to present to the world, would be treated worse than a common servant was beyond belief. Even the potent alcohol he gulped couldn't ease the complex emotions that churned within her at the thought of the princess becoming her daughter-in-law overnight. It was a night filled with resentment and bitterness, but Eric remained unchanged as always. The final day arrived. Thousands of people lined the streets, shouting joyously that this was a great event for the kingdom. Through the carriage window, Eric saw only cheerful faces. Watching this unexpected scene, a bitter smile briefly crossed his lips. The silent carriage finally halted before the grand entrance of the Grand Temple. Some, attempting to gauge intentions, whispered exaggeratedly. The last remaining princess of the royal family makes her appearance today. What must she look like now? She is, after all, the daughter of the last queen, isn't she? The bustling noise gradually died down as the stern demeanor of the Margrave of Cladnir and his retainers followed Eric into the temple. One of Cladnir's retainers rushed in and approached the Margrave at the front, whispering, he conveyed the message. We have just been informed, his majesty is unwell and will not be able to attend today. At least the princess, the bride-to-be, has arrived safely. The retainer's follow-up caused the Margrave of Cladnir to clench his fist. A priest soon announced the beginning of the ceremony. Eric nodded once and stepped onto the podium. Despite his outward calm, his mind was a whirlwind of thoughts. As the doors opened revealing the princess, her face veiled, wore an opulent wedding gown. The sight of her frail body almost swallowed by the heavy fabrics was neither fitting nor pleasant, however, that wasn't the only issue. The unnatural way she was dragged forward supported by maids on either side, was a significant shock to the guests. Whispering began to spread throughout the crowd. When the high priest declared their marriage blessed by God and it was time to lift the veil and kiss the bride, Eric dutifully kissed his new bride. The princess's eyes were unfocused, and though he couldn't remember the feel of her lips, he performed the ceremony flawlessly. 